Hi there, Mark Nicholson here, host of Historical Perspective, back again with Dr. Patrick Blythe of Seminole State College in Sanford, Florida, and uh, we're talking about another historical topic. Uh, we're going to talk about Thomas Jefferson, uh, the greatest human being who ever lived on Earth, apparently, <laughs> because he's quoted, it seems, by everybody today. You, you just can't get into the media, uh, the Tea Party and other major political, I've seen it on the liberal side, everybody, everybody quotes Thomas Jefferson. Why does everybody quote Thomas Jefferson? Well, um, I, this is a difficult one, uh, and I think, but... Uh, no, no, it's not. It's actually just letting the camera tell them why. Yes, yes. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson, I think, embodies in many ways contradictions that are at the heart of the United States. Uh, American slavery, American freedom, um, to, um, well, to take the title of Edmund Morgan's uh, famous book. Uh, and... Um, uh, I think, too, uh, so much of an idealist, uh, as represented in the uh, uh, writing of the Declaration of Independence, uh, but at the same time, of course, um, you know, a slave owner who said uh, uh, all men are created equal. Uh, and, of course, uh, slavery and uh, inequality, yet the perception of opportunity, uh, are... Uh, seem to be very much uh, both very present in the American psyche, and Thomas Jefferson's life and writings uh, fit um, very much both of those. Um, he's, I think, uh, very quotable too, as anybody would be, in that he uh, lived a long life um, full of contradiction, although and, and never shut up, and never shut up. We like, have a lot of writing oh, about him. There's a I don't. I remember. I've heard. I can't remember how many unbelievable tomes are oh, full of absolutely. Jefferson writing. It's just unbelievable. Well, and and he was so in his eighties too when he yes, passed, wasn't he? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, hmm. close. I don't actually. He was in his eighties. I'm yeah. almost. I'm, oh, I don't. I'm fairly certain he was in his eighties when he died. Fairly simple to check. It's. Um, yeah. It, yes. Just uh, do a Google search, and you'll and then you'll find out I'm correct that Jefferson was in his eighties <laughs> when he passed away. So I'm thinking he was only slightly younger than John Adams, who I know John Adams was 90 when he died. Yeah. I remember that one for a fact. John Adams, they died the same day, so. Yes. Um, July 4th. Yes, 1826. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, but um, I, I think, uh, so yeah, Thomas Jefferson, I mean, he has such um, voluminous works. And not only did he write a lot, but a lot of it survived. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, of course, too, um, you know, I mean, part of the contradiction, of course, Jefferson is beloved, I think, by many people on um, our modern right because they see him as uh, an advocate of small government. The election of 1800 um, was kicked out the, the Federalists and uh, John Adams and installed a... Um, Jefferson had this conception of the yeoman farmer, was the ideal American. But, and to continue the contradiction, when he became yes, president, exactly. he expended more executive power than John Adams ever did. Well, that's president. where I was going with yeah, that, exactly, yeah. especially he, in the Louisiana Purchase. Louisiana Purchase, and then he um, saved Aaron Burr from being hung almost, basically, yes. in the famous treason trial by yes. withholding executive, mm -hmm. uh, uh, using executive powers to withhold information. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just... Yes. Of course, he didn't want to embarrass his own administration at mm -hmm. that point. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, and, uh, but... Also, to get back, um, uh, he uh, had, of course, not just slaves, but he was, uh, many, uh, several of his slaves were uh, his uh, own progeny. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, and that, uh, for uh, anybody who is interested in, I think, uh, Jefferson's relationship with uh, his slaves, and particularly Sally Hemings, but... Uh, would do very well to read uh, Annette Gordon Reed's uh, Hemings of Monticello, uh, who has really shut the door on the question of whether uh, Jefferson had uh, a relationship with Sally Hemings. At mm -hmm. this point, there is really little question yeah. about that. But uh, of course, I think that is one of the things that uh, is that is at the height, in some ways, admitting uh, Jefferson's faults, uh, and, uh, is which some people are so reluctant to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, is uh, admitting, you know, some of the more shady parts in the, in the United States' has past, yeah. um, well, which makes uh, him and uh, of course he was um, secular for his day. One of the 
um, you know, a deist, um, did not believe in miracles, was a yeah. student of the Enlightenment. I've, I've talked, so, I don't know if I've talked about it here, but the Jefferson Bible where he took all the miracles out of the Bible. Yes. It's like, it's really thin, it's almost hilarious because it's so contradictory to anybody who grew up with the Bible. Yes, well, he kept uh, what he called the moral teachings, mm -hmm. I think, some of the Beatitudes. Yeah. And, Christ teaching. Most of the Psalms, I think, stay because he yeah. liked the, the, the language. Well, yeah, and what, um, you know, Christ's death and resurrection, the resurrection did not stay. No, there is, all the revelations are gone. I remember yes. that about, like, almost all of the, like, no, yes. no, 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 that happened. That's just... Well, and so I think <laughs> Jefferson speaks in many ways to what people who want to see the United States as a completely secular nation yeah. will often quote Jefferson. Well, and they quote him, too, because it seems to lend an air of... Um, Credibility, right? So mm -hmm. we're quoting Jefferson. Yes. And no matter what context this quote actually has or what it actually means, see, we're legitimate because we quoted Thomas Jefferson. Yes. No matter how ridiculous the quote is, like uh, the we talked about this last night. The 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 tree of revolution should be fertilized with the blood of patriots and tyrants yes. alike. Which he was talking about the French. He wasn't talking about the Americans. Well, Jefferson was the great admirer of the French. He spent long time. He yeah. spent a long time in France. I mm -hmm. think an early ambassador uh, to France, I think, during the war, uh, and then after No, the it was after the war. It was after the war. Yeah, yeah during the war, it was uh, Franklin. Oh, was, yes. Yeah, and Jefferson, well, yes. <laughs> Jefferson didn't come until they started negotiating yes. the peace in, in 1782 yes. and then in 1783, yes. and then he was not named ambassador when Franklin retired at the end of the peace. Mm -hmm. Well, and Franklin, yes. Well, another figure, too, that mm -hmm. is... Oft, often quoted and misquoted and yeah. uh, taken out of context. Well, once again, someone who wrote volumes. Yes. Well, Ben Franklin literally had a magazine where he <laughs> wrote all the time. So. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah, um, yeah. exactly. So, I, yeah, I think in a lot of ways Jefferson embodies what uh, the contradictions in America as a slave owner uh, and as um, one of the persons who laid down the ideals in which this na uh, in which the United States was in part founded. Yeah. And without getting too political, because I'm trying to stay more historical than political, but I find it funny that the conservative side tends to quote Jefferson because he was probably one of the most liberal people of his day. At the time, he was considered the farthest of far left. Maybe Thomas Paine was the only person farther to the left. Well, and Thomas Paine has, I guess, um, taken a beating among modern conservatives today. Yeah. Of course, uh, Thomas Paine um, was hated during his uh, his his own time. Well, yeah, the United States. Was, was yeah, the United States basically didn't want him back when he came. Richard, he was in Paris as well. Yes, uh, involved yeah. the revolution there, and then yes. came back. And we well, of course, was jailed during him. the radical stages of the yeah. French Revolution. As was everybody. I think if you were in France, <laughs> at some point you were in jail because their revolution was kind of a big mess. <laughs> it did get, a, get did get out of yeah. hand. Well, see, then Jefferson, who made the quote about the the blood, even he went eventually. Went, no, I'm I'm out of the French Revolution. Like those people have lost their minds. When but Robert it Pierre took was, him. It took yeah. him much longer. I mean, there was also, I think, a split. Within, I mean, you had people like John Adams or Alexander Hamilton who greatly, even though, of course, they had fought a war against the British, now greatly admired at, uh, and wanted to model the United States after the British. I think they saw the stability of the British, and they exactly. liked stability. They wanted a Whereas, stable nation. I think as and Jefferson saw the French Revolution as um, the uh, um, enlightenment, as he yeah. saw it coming to fruition, uh, and then the French wouldn't even get democracy for another uh, 80 years. Yes. It was, 18, it was at post Napoleon, yeah. uh, post Franco Prussian War, 1871. Yes. So, yes. yeah, they actually were a long ways away from their own democracy. Yeah. Well, of course, I think many of the authors of the Constitution, Madison especially, would have said the United States wasn't started as a democracy no, either, but a republic. Yeah. But, it, but, but that's the French didn't get a republic until. Well, yes. Yeah. Uh, any type of the representative French, yeah, government. They were just pretty much let's a, say, yes. yeah, monarchy. Yes. Uh, well, monarchy replaced with uh, uh, military despotism. Yeah. Yes. And then we got another monarch, and he yes. was kind of a. Uh, well, we won't say too much about Louis Philippe. He wasn't real smart. <laughs> and then we had Louis Napoleon, and but yeah, you know, we're kind of double oh, with We're kind of digressing away from the topic, yeah. which was Jefferson um, and his and his and the memory of him today. Yeah. Uh, and why he uh, remains a yeah. controversial it's, figure. I, I actually did a video where I talked about this, and I talked about we deify the founding fathers too much. Yes. And Jefferson is just one of them. Don't deify Thomas Jefferson. Remember, Thomas Jefferson is a real, fallible human being, and that makes him vastly more interesting. If he's perfect, then why bother studying him? I mean... <laughs> Well, you know, it, well, exactly. And you this is, see a person for his mistakes and his triumphs. Well, well, exactly. And of course, the mis and many mistakes that people make only come mm -hmm. become mistakes in the um, 
uh, and and uh, with, with with hindsight. Yeah. But but yes, the deification of the founding fathers. I mean, is not typical. Your video earlier on the American exceptionalism. Um, nations, uh, especially after kind of the development of uh, the idea of the nation in the 19th century and in Europe, always were kind of looking for a history. Where did this nation come from? Deification is nothing new and is not unique to the United States, but if your goal is to truly understand um, U.S. history, mm -hmm. deification um, it does not work. Yeah. And uh, the founding fathers lived in their own time, in their own context. and. Well, just as they lived in their own context, so should we live in ours. Let's not expect uh, people from the 18th century to be able to speak to the issues of the 21st century. And one last point. My favorite founding father, John Adams, because that man knew how to make his mistake. John Adams could make a mistake like it was nobody's business. That man knew how to make a mistake. He didn't just make mistakes. He compounded his mistakes and made them much worse. The Alien and Sedition Acts. Oh, that, that, was, that was the biggest one he made. He made other ones throughout his career, but yes. I, I do like John Adams. Shortly after the, the writing of the First Amendment, uh, yeah. a few years after that, it was... Yeah. Uh, no, forget upon. that. Uh, <laughs> yes. They insulted me a little bit. Ah. <laughs> but, uh, there's, yeah, but I could go on about John Adams. He's one of my, he really is one of my favorite, favorite figures. But uh, anyway, so I think that's, that's it. That's uh, Thomas Jefferson's legacy. And so thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this historical perspective.